fellow yoga students. Okay, we are going to be doing an assessment. And for this assessment, you're going to be doing eight movements and poses combined. And you're going to want to have a timing device. So you'll need a stopwatch or a phone in addition to your recording um, device. So you'll need something that you can record your time um, you'll need something to write down your times as well. So go ahead and have those things nearby so we can begin. For your first movement, I want you to be able to record your forward fold. So this one is very simple. It is just going to be you recording how far you can get with your hands to touching your toes. So we're going to stand up nice and tall for this one. Your feet are going to be hip width apart or close together, as close together as possible, but no more than hip width apart. You're going to stand up nice and tall. All right, so nice straight spine. And then we're just going to lean forward from those hips, relaxing the hands, upper body, back, forward, and down. So you can see I have a lot of flexibility here. My hands are resting palms on the floor. Now you might not be able to get there. You may just be touching your hands to your thighs, your hands at your shins, fingertips at your feet. Wherever you're at, I want you to take a deep inhale. Exhale, relax the air out of your body and come down a little bit deeper. We're going to do two more deep breaths. And wherever you end up after that third breath is where you're going to mark down where you're at in your ultimate forward fold today. Inhale. Exhale. Let it go. Inhale. Exhale. Let it go. Inhale. Exhale. Let it go. All right. We've let all our air out. We've let the air out of the belly. We are fully folded right now. So I would write down that I have my elbows bent. I have my hands, palms fully pressed into the floor. Head and neck relaxed. Legs are straight. And that's where my forward fold is. Some of you might have your legs bent. Some of you might have your fingertips to your knees. You get the idea. That's where I want you to write down where you are in your fold today for your assessment. All right, come out of this slowly, slowly stack the spine, one vertebra at a time, saving the head and neck for the last bit. And that's your first movement of today's assessment. Okay, our next movement is gonna be tree pose. Actually, it's not a movement, it's a pose. So for tree pose, we're going to find a place to look at across from you that's at eye level. And this is tree, like a tree in the forest, T-R-E-E. -E. And we are going to bring our self to a nice, sturdy mountain position. I'm just going to show you real quick what it's going to look like before we begin. All right. You're going to have three options, the ankle, the knee or you can come into half lotus and then the full tree is the arms out to the side so this is what it's going to look like in the end all right that's what we're going for but there's a lot of steps to get into this properly so take your time to get into it properly i promise it makes it it makes sense to do it this way and it will give you more success to do it the right way so feet come together, mountain pose. Lift those toes up, spread them down. Tighten through the calves and thighs. Tuck the tailbone, engage your abs. Inhale, roll the shoulders up. Exhale, relax them back and down. Good, shift your weight into your left leg. Bring that right foot up into the left ankle, knee, or up into that inner thigh, or half lotus. Bring the hands into prayer position and press the back of the thumbs into the breastbone as you focus on that point across from you at eye level with a soft gaze. Now for this one, we're not going to time ourselves. I'm just going to have you write down for the assessment how you're feeling and how your confidence is in this pose. So arms come up, 
Open those arms out to the sides and just hold it and breathe. Relax your shoulders away from the ears. Keep pressing that right ankle into the left, sorry, right heel into the left ankle and right ankle into the left heel. Or if you have the legs into half lotus, same idea. All right, so this one, we're not necessarily going for time, we're going for confidence, good balance, just writing down how you're feeling in this position on this side. This is a lot about the leg strength, the balance, the concentration and focus. All right, so just take your time, feel it out, pause the video, practice with this one. Arms are gonna come down when you're ready. Come on out and shake those legs out. Let's do it on the other side. Feet come together, lift the toes up, spread them down. Tighten through the calves and thighs. Tuck the tailbone, engage your abs. Inhale, roll the shoulders up, back and down. Hands come into prayer position. Good, press the back of the thumbs into the breastbone. Shift your weight into the right leg and bring that left Heel to the right ankle, knee, inner thigh, or into half lotus, whatever works for you. Focus on that point across from you at eye level. Breathing the whole time, nice deep breaths. Good. Inhale, stretch those arms up. Exhale, relaxing the shoulders down as you open the arms out to the sides and breathe. Pressing that standing foot down into the ground. Pushing the floor away from you. And pushing that left foot or left heel into that right leg. Like your life depends on it. Finding the balance, finding the concentration. If your left knee is out to the side, it should be. You want it to be directly out to the left, not kind of out here wobbly. You want it out directly to the left, opening that hip joint. Good. So just be working on that throughout the semester. Good. Relax the arms down and shake out those legs. So that's number two, tree pose. All right, next up is goddess pose. G-O-D-D-E-S-S, -S, goddess pose. So what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna bring our feet out about three feet, depending on how tall you are. If you're six foot four, which we have a six foot four student in this class, you're gonna go a bit wider. If you're a shorter person, you're gonna probably be about two feet apart. All right. so. I'm going to be about three feet apart here. Now we're going to turn those toes out almost toward the short edges of your mat. And then we're going to drop the knees down over the heels, trying to go for 45 degree angles with your knees. This is one where you're going to time yourself. All right, but I'm just showing you in the beginning. Now your hand placement can be here like we just did before in tree pose where you have those hands in prayer position, pressing the back of the thumbs into the breastbone or chest. You can stretch the arms up and open, holding them like so, or you can come down at beautiful right angles, holding them like so. All right, this gives you a nice upper body workout too. All right, so that's what we're gonna do for goddess pose. So we're gonna time this one and see how long you can hold it as part of our assessment. Gives you a nice hip opener, glutes involved, hamstrings, quads. This is a really good full body movement and position. So let's go ahead and time ourselves in goddess pose. Arms are going to come out and in to prayer position to begin. Come on down. Let's do it together to begin. Good. I'm going to Select these arms out 
at right angles. Just do this with you for a while. Squeezing the belly button into the spine. Ah, oh, this feels really good. Nice, strong goddess pose, feeling the energy of the earth beneath those feet. Feeling like a wall here, like nobody's gonna take me down. Just feeling like I am solid. Breathe deep here. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, let it go. Squeeze that belly button into the spine. Good. Wiggle those fingertips a little bit. Looking good. Awesome work, everyone. All right, come on up and out of that when you're ready. Don't come out of it just because I did. You time yourself and stay in it as long as you can. Okay, next pose is going to be plank position. Getting into those abs a little bit more. This is number four, P-L-A-N-K. Now for plank position, you have your modification. You can be on your knees if you need to be. You can be on your forearms if you need to be. Okay, but if you're going to be on those forearms, they are directly underneath the shoulders. Harder position maybe for some of you, maybe not, depending on your wrists, your forearms, any injuries you might have had in your shoulders from previous things you've done with your body um, is going to be up on those hands. But the ideal is going to be a plank like this, okay, where you're going to be in a nice flat body position. Someone could eat dinner off the back, squeezing the belly button into the spine, solid, straight back body. Okay, this is your plank where we're going to hold this for time. You're going to hold it as long as you can for today's assessment. And again, you can come to the knees the whole time. Um, you're just going to write down whatever you do, but try to pick where you're going to be for today and stick with it. And then you're going to write that down how you did today for the assessment. Whatever modifications you make, are perfectly fine for today. We'll do this assessment four times throughout the semester and you will get better every single time, stronger and better every time. So do what works for you today. Okay, so this is plank position. Next position from here is going to be down dog. Number five is D-O-W-N, dog. So for down dog, we have a couple of options. We have puppy dog, which means you're going to start from this place and walk the hands forward and have your head between your elbows. This is puppy dog. This is a variation or a modification for folks that really have a hard time staying in down dog for too long. So this would be your down dog variation called puppy dog. And this is where I want you to stay if that's the variation that you need. Otherwise, if you can, for traditional down dog, you're going to bring yourself into all fours, bring the ears between the biceps, press that bottom to the heels with the toes tucked under, and go ahead and step yourself into down dog. Now I make a little adjustment because I've got long limbs till I feel nice, like a equal triangle here. And my balance is right there at the center of my tailbone with equal weight in my hands and feet. And I'm gonna hold this down dog as long as I can today for my assessment, right? Timing myself, relaxing my head and neck as long as I can, my long spine. That's what we're going for. So you're gonna time yourself here. Bicycle those knees if you need to in down dog. That's totally fine. You don't want any sharp pain. Just always getting that spine nice and long. Really great things you can do in down dog are to tuck those armpits in toward your rib cage. Keep your shoulder blades nice and flat. Tuck your shoulder blades down toward your jean pockets. Keep your shoulders away from your ears. All those little adjustments 
help you get comfortable here. All right, so tie yourself in down dog. Okay, next up is our bridge pose. So getting a little opposite here with where our body positioning is, coming to your back. So for bridge pose, you're gonna come onto your back, place those heels up next to your bottom, rest the arms up overhead. So if you need a modification for bridge pose, you can grab your block and use that to support you under your spine in the lower back area. But if you're able to, go ahead and come on up, slowly float the spine up, squeeze in your glutes, press into your heels, and start the timer once your belly comes as high as you're able to. I like to imagine that someone's blown a balloon up underneath my back, and I'm just chilling like a villain with that balloon as a cushion underneath me. What you really want to do though is imagine that you aren't going anywhere. You don't want to start to sag or sink. You really want to stay nice and firm with the heels pressed in. You can adjust by pressing into your toes and lifting the heels. Maybe push back down into your heels. Wiggle your toes a little bit. That helps give you some relief. You're gonna be adjusting into your hamstrings more and then your quads as you do that. But it does help you stay here a little bit longer for your assessment time. Make sure that your knees are hip width apart and in line with your heels. So everything is in alignment there. And you're not starting to Sink those legs apart or sink the knees in together. We want to keep everything in line. So timing yourself there in bridge pose. And next up, almost to the end, number seven is our push-up. Now this is a tricep push-up. You're going to go back into that plank type position. All right, but we are going to do this push-up not like a traditional military style push-up where the elbows go out to the side to do this push-up where the elbows drop straight back and down. So you'll see I'm doing a gentler version with my knees down and you can have those knees way up here if you need to if you're a beginner to this or you can have them way back here or if you'd like to and you're more adept at these style push-ups have those knees up come on down and up down and up all right, do as many of these as you can. That's one, okay? Two, three, four. That is a yoga push-up, all right? So that is what I want you to count. So you're gonna give me totals on those. And then finally, we're gonna do bicycle abs. Bicycle abs, so back onto your back for this. And for this one, you're going to count how many you do on total. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, all right? And these are not that easy. So if you need to keep your feet down, that's your modification. This would be one, two, Three, that's your modification. And then maybe eventually you'll work up to having those knees coming to the elbows. All right, maybe it doesn't work for you quite yet to lift the head and neck up. All right, so you need to just start here, lifting those hands toward the knees. Or maybe it works for you to lift the knees up only. All right, so you'll just write down what modifications you make that work for your body, for your bicycle abs or bicycle crunches. You write down whatever you want, but these are bicycle abdominal crunches. And they're number eight for your assessment. This is it. So do as many as you can keeping the belly button pressed into the spine. I don't want to see backs arching up. See how there's space underneath my back here? That's a no-no. No doing that, okay? We want to keep pressing the belly button into the spine. 
They don't count when that spine arches up. That's bad for you. Keep the belly button pressed down and in and keep your lower back pressed into the floor too. All right, this is the ideal. Boom, 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 boom. That's what you want. That's when you work on those side obliques. You start getting into the side abdominals. Feel really good. And you've just gotten a full body workout. And I'm gonna post a nice little warm, uh, cool down series of stretches you can do after this. So you can stretch it out. All right, so do your best. Be nice to yourself and have fun. See you next time.